praise God viewers once again we are so honored uh, to share our testimony with you today I have a new person I have a guest her name is Susan Kayongo she will be sharing her experience her testimony on how God delivered her from spiritual husbands so uh, I know that there is someone out there that is watching and you've been tormented by these evil spirits and you, you're trying to see how to get out of that situation. Today there is hope. There is someone that God has delivered from those oppressing spirits and today she's more than a conqueror and she's here to share her testimony. Before we, we share her testimony, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for following us, for liking, for subscribing, for sharing. Please, if you have not subscribed, just subscribe. And let us know what you think about whatever we do in the comment section. If you want to donate to this ministry, you can also go to the description box below and you get the information. Avoid people who come into the comment section and start asking for money and and prophesying that uh send this amount of seed so that uh that problem that you have can go or oh, donate to this uh organization in nigeria we do not have an organization in nigeria we have a foundation in in uganda and to find out more about that foundation you can go uh, the foundation is called world share foundation you can visit our website www.lifeispiritual.org and you'll find more information on how to be of help to that foundation. Uh, without wasting a lot of time, let me introduce my sister, Susan, and she'll be sharing her experience. Sister, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, kindly tell them who Susan is. I know someone is uh, asking, who is this Susan? Where is she from? Uh, how, uh, how did she get saved and all that? Yeah, so you're the best person to answer. Yeah, so who is Susan? Uh, so my name is Susan Kayongo. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm 28 years old. Mm -hmm. I was born in Kakamega, mm -hmm. uh, St. Mary's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up and was raised by my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. What about your parents? How about so them? when mm -hmm. I was, um, when my mother expected me, mm -hmm. my father, they had a dispute and so they had to separate. Mm. And so I was left by my grandmother, me and my sister. Mm. Yeah. So your two children, yes, raised by your grandmother. Yeah, as if from my mother and father we are two, but mm. extended family we are more. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so how was that experience growing up with your grandparent? Is it grandmother? Grand yeah, yeah, grandmother. Mm. I could say it was not easy. Like uh, while growing up, we used to have many questions. You'll ask yourself. Why am I not raised by my parents? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I am raised by my grandmother? Why did my mother have to, re to reject me or leave me and go? Like I could not understand all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I grew up by my grandmother who was a herbalist. Mm -hmm. I could see people coming to the houses. She would give them medicines, herb herbal medicines. Mm -hmm. And even uh, children, she, some she could like, give them medicine and treat them okay like how old were you by then like how old by, by the time your parents separated mm -hmm. how old were you i was eight months oh yeah. so all your life you knew your grandmother yeah okay and my father was there but he used to come to visit once in a while yeah yeah okay then school how was your school experience uh, so i studied at dr livingston primary school it's in mm. jerusalem mm. and uh, i managed to from class one to class eight mm. from there i did not i did not go to high school because my grandmother right. could not afford to reach us beyond that oh. yeah mm. would you at some point consider going back to school or at this point you feel like maybe i, I would just concentrate on doing uh, some businesses and working yeah. like many times actually I considered uh, if I did have that chance to go mm. to adult school like nowadays you have schools that you can continue to work and attend them mm. so there's a time that I considered if I get that chance yeah I could I could have continued my studies it's my prayer that God answers answers your prayer yeah uh, if if any of you wants to stand with her through her education you can just uh, let us know and 
and see how we can see her through her education. See, uh, I always want uh, girls also to have that opportunity to go to school. I thank my parents for availing that opportunity for me. If if they had not uh, availed that opportunity for me to go to school, life would be more difficult. So if there is an opportunity for you to help a lady go back to school, please, and, and God has given you the, the resources, yeah, we, we will gladly appreciate yeah, that opportunity. Yeah. So now back to that story. Um, you studied up to class eight, mm -hmm. and then you started seeing your grandmother Mm -hmm. uh, give people herbs. Yeah. Apart from that, what else would you see your grandmother do? Yeah, I could see some of the women used to come and give birth in the house. It's mm. like they, she was a birth attendant. Yeah. Okay. And also some children they used to be cut like, like she used to say it's a form of protection that they are being protected away mm. from getting diseases and and all that. And she used to have herbs. She will treat them with those and uh, cut them with razors mm. and put uh, like like a dark powder and mm. put it at the at the uh, where she has cut and she used to say that is for protection. My grandmother used to do the same. She she was also a bath attendant, a herbalist. Uh, I remember her cutting me and inserting the same kind of herbs and saying that they are, they were for protection. But that was the beginning of of of, of trouble in my life. So. Tell me, did she cut you also? Yeah, yeah. In my childhood, mm. all of us, even my wow. sister, mm. even even my brother, my stepbrother, mm. and so even the people around around the village used to bring their babies, and they will, uh, she will cut them. And mm. so at my childhood, there was a time when I was almost six to seven years old. Mm. There's someone who used to call him Baba Mdogo. Baba Mdogo is like a father. Mm. We were told that we are of the same family. Mm. I remember she used to call some some of the kids to his house and he used to touch us inappropriately mm. and sometimes he would give us like five shillings but at that at that age I didn't know I didn't know what he was doing but I thought that it was it was okay okay he, he would come and touch you inappropriately yeah. like um like, abusive way yeah yeah he even he would insert his fingers Mm. to our vaginas we used to be like kids mm. around that group because i i've grown up in a in a ghetto mm. yeah oh no sorry mm. so uh a, a, apart from touching you was mm -hmm. did he also take advantage of you i don't remember beyond that but i guess maybe he did mm. yeah but I, what i remember he used to insert his fingers we, we were a lot of kids oh, the kids sorry. of the neighborhood yeah. sorry okay yeah, so that also opened a, yeah, a door yeah. for the enemy to attack your yeah, life. Yeah. And from that, I became like, we used to play with boys, like how children play together, mm. but we, we used to go and have sex. It's like, from that moment, I became like, I I would, we'll just play with kids and go and play and have sex when we were kids. We didn't know what we were, we were going doing. It's like that opened a door, mm. a bad door. What age was that? I think around seven, eight years old, nine, like in oh. my childhood. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, viewers, it's, it's a touching uh, story, it's a touching experience, but we are sharing to help somebody who's been through it or probably going through it and they think it's impossible to get delivered. Today we want to tell you there is hope. She overcame, she's talking as a victor, as a winner, and and she wants to encourage you. She wants to tell you that you can also overcome. Yeah, so at that age, now you've, you've been exposed mm -hmm. to sex, yeah. and uh, the people, the person who's supposed to protect you mm -hmm. is taking advantage of you. Yeah. Oh, so uh, what else happened? So uh, I guess that opened a door in my life, like, mm -hmm. I used to used to go to play as kids, mm -hmm. and we will interact in uh, sex. Mm -hmm. We will play with boys like that. Play games. We, we say it's brickicho, but we will go on hiding, mm -hmm. and we will find ourselves messing up with smaller smaller kids at our our age group. Mm -hmm. And so as I grew up, I I started experiencing a lot of 
torturing experience in my dreams. I could see figures, uh, uh, maybe at our windows, people there. I could be abused, see, just fear that the, the enemy installed fear in me when I was a kid. Mm. And I didn't choose to tell anyone, I'll just, I'll just keep it to myself. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So these figures, uh, what were they looking like? Uh, were they like uh, looking like human beings or animals? or? Yeah, like human beings. I used to see like some figures like on the windows, they're trying to scare me. At that time, uh, being a child, you feel like terrified. I, I remember there's a time I didn't want to sleep alone. I would go to my grandmother mm -hmm. and, try to, uh, and uh, sleep with her. But I will still experience a lot of attacks in my dream life. Let me, let me just say, since I was a kid in my dream life, I've experienced a lot, a lot of attacks mm. in my dreams. Then how was your grandmother? How was her relationship with you? Was she friendly? Was she harsh? Would you easily open up to her and share your experience? Yeah, uh, no, no, I didn't open up to her of anything I, I was experiencing. Mm. But let me just say, she tried her best mm. yeah yeah okay and for her she knew that was the way to survive yeah actually when even i grew up my sister was epilept epileptic mm. so we used to visit a lot of churches it's like one church after another like because my sister would fall down he will hurt herself mm. and so wanting to, for her healing mm. even i remember even to to the we uh waganga Mm. Those people who tell you bring a chicken. Uh, I remember there's a time even my grandmother, she was asked for a goat mm. for the for the healing of my sister. And I remember in my heart I used to to feel like uh, I'm not okay with all this. Me, mm. I used to take my sister to churches. When I hear that there is a minister there who is uh, uh, doing healing and deliverance, I'll take my sister. I always have that desire to see her delivered. healed and delivered. But it got worse. The moment I took her to church is the moment she gets worse. Even my grandmother used to tell me, where did you take your sister today? You take, took her to bad people, see how now she is suffering more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was, uh, it was so hard for me to see growing up, me encountering attacks in my dreams and also to see my sister suffer. It was not easy. And how was your experience in those churches? Did they also ask for money for deliverance? Did they, did they uh, just pray for for her? Did they profess? How did they help? You? Yeah, there are some churches where uh, if you want to see a man of God, you have to book an appointment and mm -hmm. you have to pay. And maybe sometimes you don't have that. You don't have that money. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the deliverance uh, deliverance session, you go your sister manifests and you know that she is healed. But when you reach back home. Is like now the attack begins worse and worse. And even me being in school, I used to be like, you are worried, like you don't know, like today will I study well? Like the, the next minute you are, you are called, like come and see your sister has fallen outside, like and I have to take her, I tell her let's let's rush her to church. Mm -hmm. So it was very uh, it was very a hard experience for me even in school. So you you had to book an appointment. Yeah. And in that appointment, you pay some yeah. money. How much money do you pay to book an appointment? At that time, I guess it was 500, but it was, uh, yeah, 500 shillings. And then after they pray for your sister, do you pay something or? There are some of the things they, they are sold in church, like um, we're told this is anointing oil mm -hmm. and this is water, like water that has holy been water. Anointed, holy, holy water. And mm. actually, those all of those things, they were not able to make my sister receive healing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. See, one of the reasons as to why I am a bit hasty nowadays, um, I, I, I don't like go to people's churches anymore to minister and invite people. Like, I used to go to different churches and invite people to come and then I minister to them and do deliverance. And I would do it with the heart of helping. The ministers that would offer their churches to me, when they, they were offering their churches, at first it would appear like they also have the, the need to help these people. So they convince you that we need to help people so you can, you can feel free to, to come and invite them and pray for them in, in, my, in my ministry. 
and and i would do that invite people pray for them counsel them uh, some of them who need help you uh, i would help them and after some time you see the pastors changing they start now asking people for money for offerings for tithes for do you fruits uh, first fruit second fruit i don't know which fruit you you see strange things and now because they have come there to church because of you they think you're also part of it yet you're not part of it so for that reason i am not meeting people in people's churches i just said if at all i need to meet with people i need a neutral ground like a place where i'm not going to be told what to tell people i need a place where i don't have to pay rent at the end of the month at least the only thing i can be mindful about is um power and water and the water bills that one i can i can pay for them but i don't need to make people give me an offering for deliverance or book an appointment with 500 kenya shillings or a thousand or whichever amount of money deliverance is free of charge i want a situation where i can meet people and pray with them without any conditions so if you have a place in nairobi a place that 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 we can use and and pray for people without paying for that place you know because it is it, because people have to pay for those places that sometimes they end up exploiting or manipulating people taking advantage of them but we just need a place where we can just meet with people pray for them and then go back home you know with people, with with solutions to people's problems yeah so back to the your testimony you you paid bought holy water holy rice holy what whatever you bought it did not work yeah. Yeah, because salvation is free, deliverance is free. You're not supposed to buy uh, or pay for anything. I can imagine how much money I was supposed to pay for my deliverance. Mm -hmm. If a person with a health condition like your sister has to pay 500 for an appointment, just an appointment minus the service, then I, I wonder how much money I would be paying for my deliverance. My deliverance took three years, so all those three years, I wonder how much I would be paying. But we serve a faithful God; He's merciful, and we want to tell you out there that if you go to a place and they are telling you to book an appointment and you have to pay a certain amount of money and you have to buy holy rice, holy water, holy anything, just run away, just run away. Salvation is free; deliverance is free. Jesus paid the price. So you don't need to pay a price for your deliverance. All you need to do is to accept Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Get the word, get it from the Bible and feel it into your spirit. And when you know the word by yourself, then that's the beginning of your deliverance. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, and uh, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So the truth is in the word of God. So just get the word of God read it for yourself listen to ministers of the word ministers who are speaking the the real word live alone people who are telling you that you you travel nations you will move mountains and then you're shouting out of excitement prophesy so and so prophesy but they are not feeding your spirit they are not feeding your soul with the word of god that is what you need to survive in this wicked world you need the word and then learn to pray for yourself Many times we go to men and women of God and tell them, man of God, pray for me. I have this problem. I have... And they'll tell you that they'll pray for you. There's no place you go to and a man or woman of God tells you that they will not pray for you. They, they will not be honest. So they have to be polite and they'll tell you that I'll pray for you. But remember, they are also human beings. They also have their own issues. So how many people are telling them to pray for them? Maybe they are in the thousands. These are people who have big congregations. You think they will remember you when they get back to their homes? No, they will not because they have a lot of things at hand. The ministry is just overwhelmingly tiresome for them. So you need to learn how to pray for yourself. And when you learn how to pray for yourself, it's good for people to pray with you, but it's very important for you to learn how to pray for yourself. And uh, this COVID situation has, it has really taught us that People who have been relying on pastors for everything. Pastor, I want to start a business. What do you say about it? Pastor, I want to get married. I want to have the firstborn. What do you say about me having my firstborn? Pastor, everything pastor. So this COVID time has 
uh, made us realize that hey this thing of pastor 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 this pastor that building uh, going to buildings and feeling that you, you ha only have access to god when you're in one building those things are coming to an end that's when you realize that your personal relationship with god is more important than buildings than than you being known by a man of god some people pretend when they are right in front of the pastors that's when they are dressing decently that's when they are speaking like saints the moment the pastors turn their backs that's when their true character comes out when they are with their house helps at home they are treating them like rubbish when they are at church they are like angels they are like saints at their places of work everyone is terrified and afraid of them so it comes to a point whereby your personal relationship with christ is what matters it's very important for you to build that relationship with god yeah so my sister tried everything she tried uh, anointing oil she tried all the holy 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 water she tried uh, booking appointments she did everything the sister is still in that condition sorry about that my sister mm. so we continue mm. Mm. so your sister did not get help so I was saying even in school, it was not easy even for her. Mm. And actually when I finished my class 8, mm. the, the results I got, I didn't, even, I didn't even want to go and look at them. It was not what I expected because most of the time I was like uh, in uh, worry, how mm. is my sister and all that. Mm. But even I thank God that he allowed me to, to reach that to her. Mm. And so after that... Uh, I stayed at home and um, I managed to go to a college of hairdressing mm. and I did that college for a period of time mm. and then I had an, opportun an opportunity to work in Saudi Arabia mm. and so when I had of that opportunity I was like ah this is it like mm. I could be able to like I always desired that one day God may help me mm. to just uh, live this uh, to live a life of uh, like I can be able to study mm. and uh, live a life that is not in poverty because while well, growing up it was not easy for me. So I Tell always us. have that desire to be successful. Yeah, yeah to that succeed. poverty uh, kind of that poverty. Yeah, you you're telling me that you come from a humble background. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to know mm -hmm. about that background. Yeah, uh, I could see people coming to my grandmother's farm having issues of businesses, like she used to give them medicine, like this will help you mm. be rich. But while uh, as at home, mm. I could see the life we are having, we are struggling. It's not like we had a good life. Mm. Poverty was there in the family and you could not see anyone that you could look up to that can help you. Mm. Yeah, so it was not easy. Even sometimes we used to go on uh, without food sometimes. And even I remember the house we used to live in, it used to leak before we could have another house to settle in. Mm. So yeah, that, that's some, some of the challenges that we experienced while growing up. Huh. So now someone brings that idea of you to travel. Yeah. And who is this person? Now? It was someone that came for medication there. He wanted to get treated and said, mm. there is a chance in Saudi Arabia for girls. And I was only like 20. 20 years at that time, mm. they say that, okay, you cannot go now. You have to wait for the next year because you have to reach 21. Mm. So I, I saw that that is a good chance for me because I could be able to, to succeed. I thought, of, okay, maybe I'll go there. I'll come back home. I'll start a business or maybe uh, I'll build a house uh, for our family. That, that was my hope that I'll be able to take them out of that situation they are. They are. Mm. But uh, little did I know that it is not all that glitters is gold. gold. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, take us through the process of getting the visa mm -hmm. and and you getting to Saudi Arabia before we we know what happened. That's why because someone wants to know yeah. where did she get the money and <laughs> and how did she start applying for this visa and did she go with a company yeah. or an agent? So at that time, actually, it's an agent. They have both in town mm. and you used to be paid for everything even if we actually I didn't even have birth certificate because uh, when my mother left she didn't leave that birth certificate and I needed that to travel 
like the agency will even make you have uh, will uh, provide they will go to the offices and uh, make you have that birth certificate mm. and even your passport they will provide because actually your sponsor like pays like buys you sort of that mm. it's like he pays a lot of money to the agency that that person will cater your passport your anything you want and at that time, even if you don't have fear to go to that, their offices, they used to provide. So and it's like your boat. Yeah, yeah. That is slave trade. It's, it's like a new version of slave trade. Yeah, but at that time, I couldn't see it in that, in that angle. Because mm. that person, I get to know that when you're there, they actually told you, do you know how much, how much money I paid to your, to your nation that I could have you? That even... When it reaches a time you feel like okay no I want I want to go to, back to my country they tell you we actually you have to pay we our money you. yeah so you have if you want you have to you pay have to us work back. for your freedom yeah yeah, yeah. oh my to god give, give us back what we need. so um when that day reached I was very excited I used to think that okay when you board the plane you mm. will have like it's a good experience. So uh, we boarded a plane and uh, on our way, actually the office did not even pay, the, the sponsor did not pay our food on the plane. Mm -hmm. So all, it's like six hours. We have to connect to another plane. We have to reach to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and connect to another plane to go to Saudi Arabia. So all these hours at the plane, we did not eat anything. Mm -hmm. But the, the agent knew we didn't have food on the plane because it's cheaper. So the agent knew, so he bought us like chips here while we were here at lunchtime. So we were like, hey, she's good. She bought us chips. So she knew we are going like, you are seeing in the plane, people are ordering food. They are eating you. You cannot. Like even if you ask for strong tea, the amount of money you have to pay for strong tea is like, I don't know. It's like food here in Kenya is like food for the whole family. Wow. Just strong tea. So at the plane, all those hours we did not eat anything even even water you have to buy so when we alighted in abu dhabi we did not eat yet we had to wait for we were told that your plane is the next day so we had to sleep at the airport Hungry. i was not yeah i was not alone we were a captain couple of girls how many like we were three or four or five going with the same agent oh my god so um, when we reached there abu dhabi I think someone felt pity for us and it's an Arab. Maybe he realized we did not eat. Maybe we looked hungry and he bought us, he gave us coins. We were able to, he, he gave us juice and a snack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after we ate that, we slept at the airport the entire night until the next morning. Oh. On, we slept at the, uh, the chairs at the airport. Mm -hmm. So the next morning we are taking the next flight, still is not paid. Mm -hmm. Still they didn't even pay that, that, that their next flight. So we travel, hopefully we reached to Riyadh, it's in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And where we are going to work, it is like Nairobi at Kisumu. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> uh, because of time, we are going to end this testimony here, but we'll be back with part two. Of her testimony i know you want to know what happened when she she got to <laughs> she got to <laughs> to Abu Dhabi. can you imagine there is slave trade up to today africans are being are being transported now it's it has upgraded from ship to planes they are being transported for, from from their countries to the arabic nations to work and even other nations to work as slaves they by the time you get there you have already been bought and you have to pay for your freedom can you imagine that christians we have to do something we have to pray for our children we have to help like i just feel oh my god i just don't know how to explain to you what i feel but i hope you are you're learning something please subscribe like comment share i know you're going to be blessed by the videos that we are releasing. Mama Maisha, I love you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye. Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare. The awesome third part of the Erica Testimonial Series. In this edition, Erica exposes witchcraft and reveals how it can be defeated and overcome in the name of Jesus. 
everything you are going through now has an origin. And that origin can be dealt with, but you must know how. Find out in Erica Part 3, Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare, and overcome every obstacle in Jesus' name.